Hello and welcome back to Analysis Review. Voters in Greece may have given Europe's leaders breathing space, but the crisis gripping the Eurozone has not gone away and now dominates the global policy-making agenda. US President Barack Obama is among those saying that the sense of urgency is clear and that EU leaders must understand what needs to be done. What's missing right now is just uh, a sense of specifics and, and the path whereby that takes place. Uh, when markets see that, uh, that can help build confidence and re reverse psychology. So there are going to be a, a range of steps that they can take. None of them are going to be a silver bullet that solves this thing entirely over the next week or two weeks or, uh, or two months. But each step points to the fact that um, uh, Europe is moving towards uh, further integration rather than breakup, and that uh, these problems can be resolved and points to the underlying strength uh, in uh, Europe's economies. One possible solution that is gaining credibility is for a banking union that would steady the Eurozone financial system. But do national interests and technical complexity risk derailing this latest crisis fighting proposal? Joining me here to debate this are Tony Barber, our Europe editor, and Martin Sambu, our economics leader writer. And Martin, I'd like to start with you. Just give us a very quick outline of what exactly is a banking union and why could it be part of a solution? A banking union would essentially be to put in common the responsibility for managing the banking systems of the different countries that make up the Eurozone. There are a lot of different elements that could go into it. One would be a common supervisor and regulator. Another would be to give that regulator the power to deal with failing banks even national, at national level failing banks, by putting in equity from a common fund, by uh, resolving it, writing down creditors, but deciding what to do with banks that fail. A third element could be common deposit insurance to stop a bank run by depositors who worry they won't get their money back. Now those are various elements, so you know, what exactly a banking union is depends on how you decide to, decide to design those elements. Why are people talking about this? Well, it's because Currently, the Eurozone crisis is really a crisis of a lethal embrace between national governments, sovereign debt, mm -hmm. and national banking systems. And the reason why they are so linked with each other is that, well, banks are the ones that typically buy a government's sovereign debt, but banks also depend on a government's credit worthiness because the government ultimately is who bails out the banks. So when one goes down, it drags the other down, and it works both ways. So the idea is, let's try to separate these two and manage one of them in common. Well, Tony, interesting idea, but we've had other interesting ideas. Eurozone bonds is one that hasn't taken off. Is this another one that uh, is, is unlikely to fly? The implications of a banking union go beyond just uh, uh, tighter common regulation of the of the European banking system. They imply equal uh, moves towards fiscal union and therefore political union. Which so sovereignty is at stake. So national sovereignty becomes an issue. Um, the, is the problem that is thrown up by that is uh, whether the German government in particular will lead the, the way on this is a, is there the is there the political uh, desire to go forward on this and then that it, that also implies the question of whether the german constitutional court might get involved uh, there are strong constitutional law arguments in germany for for not moving forward on things like a banking union fiscal union unless you have european I, I, mean, I, I don't disagree with with how Tony sees this, but I think there's a different perspective. Um, I mean, if the crisis really is this interlinkage between weak sovereigns, weak governments, and weak banks, you could actually see banking union as an alternative to fiscal union. Fiscal union is about putting in common government debt or government liabilities. Banking union is about putting in common banking problems, really. Um, so in a sense, you might hope that a banking union is something that would make a fiscal union somewhat less necessary. Now, of course, there is, you would have to cede sovereignty. That's quite clear. But the sovereignty, it's a different, you know, it's a different area of sovereignty. It's basically about, does a government have full control of its banking system, including making it finance favored sectors and so on. And this is a problem as much in Germany as in 
Sure, but I mean, if you boil it down, to be glib, it's really what both of you say. It's it's an authority's base, say, in Frankfurt or possibly London or wherever, deciding that a bank in Austria or in Finland or or wherever, Germany perhaps, needs to be closed down. And that may be a bank that has huge political connections or lots of people employed and so on. Governments are going to be very wary of that, aren't they? Would it indeed cover all Eurozone? Yeah member countries. I mean, there are, there are grave difficulties, for example, with the idea of bringing Greece uh, into a common bank with, it, with its bank banking system at, at present, um, really having de facto negative equity. What about, just finally, London, the city, Europe's biggest banking centre, UK famously outside the Eurozone? How is it, would it be affected by this idea? The problem, of course, is that this faces, uh, this confronts Britain with the same dilemma that the fiscal treaty did back in December, although it's much worse because it hits right at the city, the financial industry, because you'll have 17 countries, maybe 20, 23, 24, all sitting together and making financial and banking policy together. And you will have a government in Westminster with no seat at that table. Tony Barrett, if I don't... I, yeah, I would, might add to that that uh, there is a, a risk that um, Britain would be sort of sleepwalking its way to a referendum on its very membership of the European Union as a result of this very stark choice that Martin's just uh, outlined. And I'd, I'd, the implications of that are very uncertain indeed. That's a subject for another <laughs> programme, I think, in its own right, obviously. Tony Barber, Martin Sambu, thank you both very much. And thank you for watching. To catch up on this and other topics covered by our analysis page, please go to ft.com forward slash analysis. Until the next time, goodbye.